And tonight, sports teams across the world, from Japan to Italy, are playing in front of empty stadiums amid coronavirus fears, and major sports leagues in the U.S. are responding with new measures. The baseball, hockey, soccer, and basketball leagues are banning reporters from going into locker rooms and clubhouses, limiting access to players and essential staff only, like trainers, doctors, and public relations staffers. For now, neither the NBA or the MLB have plans to postpone games or play them without fans, but that could change. Sports owners are asking their players to adopt the CDC's recommendation of keeping at least a six-foot distance between themselves and reporters. The changes, or potential changes, are unprecedented, but designed to keep everyone safe and healthy. healthy. Pro sports leagues limiting close contact amid the coronavirus is our spotlight tonight. Joining me now, Jeff Zilgit, an NBA reporter with USA Today. Uh, Jeff, hard to imagine any of the leagues playing without fans in the stands. What are you hearing? Are we on the verge of that actually happening? Well, I think we're getting closer to that point, uh, without a doubt. Now, I'm not going to sit here and tell you that's what's going to happen. But if we take a look at what's happened around the world, you mentioned some of that just in your little intro right there, that we can certainly at least entertain the idea that it's a possibility. And at least in the NBA, they've asked their teams to put together plans uh, just in case that does happen. We already starting to talk about essential personnel in the locker room. Well, they're already coming up with plans for essential personnel uh, to be at an empty arena just to play a game. And, and so at least they're preparing for it. I'm not sure if we'll get there, but you're also starting to see some college basketball tournaments mm. starting to wonder what they should do. So we're heading in that direction, that's for sure. You know, LeBron James gave his gut reaction to the thought of playing basketball without fans, initially saying he wouldn't play, but then he backtracked on that today. Uh, there really isn't a choice in the matter, though, right, if the league makes a decision one way or the other. Yeah, there's no choice in the matter. And, and I will say that ultimately LeBron really got the best of both worlds. When he made his original comment on Friday night, he got to tell people that the fans came first. That's why he plays the game. Uh, but then, and whether or not he knew about it, he says he did it, that there was actual discussions. He walked it back, and he realizes that, one, the Lakers are playing for a championship this year, so he's not going to sit out a game that they could potentially lose. And he, then he also realizes that we are in the midst of a, a public health crisis and that he's going to do what the league tells the team to do. Yeah, didn't didn't think about the championship aspect of it, but that's a good point. Uh, you know, what's a, what about what's happening in sports overseas? Several countries seeing teams playing in front of empty stadiums because of the coronavirus. Uh, is, is that a picture of what's to come? Are you worried about that? Uh, I don't know if worry, but I do think it's a, a real possibility. And, mm. you know, among people who belong to the Pro Basketball Writers Association, we're fighting for as much access as possible. And even if they got to a point where they play a game in an empty arena with no fans, just essential personnel, that reporters are fighting to be part of that group that is there to document what happens, to see what it's like to play these major games without fans. Yeah, I would think reporters would be essential personnel so you can report out uh, what happened play by play, right? No, that's absolutely it. And look, I understand the, the clampdown on the locker room access right now, but those relationships that we build through attending practices, uh, post-game, being in the locker room, having private one-on-one -on -one conversations with players, that, that's exactly how we're able to tell some of the stories that we tell. So while we understand right now this is necessary, we hope this isn't a long-term thing. And I will just also add this. If you have a relationship with the player right now, there's nothing preventing you from a little one-on-one -on -one access off to the side to continue to tell your stories. Uh, but right now, most of the interviews will be done in group settings. Are you surprised, though, about the impact overall of the coronavirus on sports especially? You know, to be honest, I'm not as surprised, only because I was starting to follow it, uh, you know, for this very reason, when it moved from China into mm -hmm. Europe and paying attention to it that way, seeing what other sports leagues were doing. Now, the United States, such a massive country, and, and I wanted to see where some of the outbreaks were, but we're seeing them in, in major cities with, you know, significant populations, uh, both in the state of California and New York. And, and I expect it, you know, as we're listening to health officials to grow in some other cities as well. 
Well, here's to hoping fans and reporters like you continue to have access throughout this coronavirus outbreak. Uh, Jeff Zilgin, an NBA reporter with USA Today, thank you for joining me. Thank you.